Hey Sarah, what you up to? Oh, I'm just pulling some books for research. We're going back in time to the 1960s soon and you can never be too prepared. Ooh, I'm so excited. I guess I could just ask my parents about this one since we're getting closer and closer to the present. But what do you think people were reading back in the 1960s? Anything good? Well, to begin with, I found some classic children's books. Here we have Green Eggs and Ham, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, Where the Wild Things Are, A Wrinkle in Time, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I loved all of those books growing up. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which was Roald Dahl's second children's novel of the 60s, is a classic book, but his first, James and the Giant Peach, is one of my favorites. As far as books written for adults, we of course have The Juggernaut, To Kill a Mockingbird. That's one of my favorite books too. I just reread it for the first time since high school and it really holds up. Not to mention 100 Years of Solitude, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, The Autobiography of Malcolm X, Catch-22, and Slaughterhouse-Five. Oh, and we can't forget my Angelou's memoir, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. That's one of my personal favorites and it remains a classic to this day. Oh, I read 100 Years of Solitude in college. Gabriel Garcia Marquez's magical realism can get pretty trippy. Maybe it was just a sign of the times. These books and more can be accessed as physical copies in ebooks or e audiobooks by visiting our website at www.hcpl.net, using the Overdrive and Libby apps, or contacting your local library. Hey, I think Taylor's in the music section looking at records. Why don't we head on over and join her? Okay, let's head over. Psychedelic rock, British invasion. Wow, Taylor, you're really throwing it back with that turntable. You're trying to start a side hustle as a DJ? Nope, just trying to decide which records to bring back in time. It'd be pretty groovy if I could get Jim Morrison to sign one of my Doors records. Wow, what a treasure trove. The Beatles, Rolling Stones, the Beach Boys, and Aretha Franklin. These artists were just as famous today as they were back then. Yep, and I'm here for a one-way ticket to Beatlemania. Did you know that they performed two shows right here in Houston? The Beatles played for $5 a ticket at the Sam Houston Coliseum on August 19, 1965. Crazy, right? Yeah, and they would stop touring just a year later. So lucky. I have to say though, I'm more of a Monkees fan. I love to watch old episodes of that show when they're on. Mickey's always getting into things. The Monkees? No way! Though, speaking of shows, I guess I'm more of a Scooby-Doo Sesame Street, and Looney Tunes person myself. Waking up on Saturday mornings to eat cereal and watch cartoons, man, that never gets old. Right? I also like the Jetsons, but boy, did they get the future wrong. I guess Rosie the Robot turns into Rosie the Roomba. So many great films were made during this decade, too. A Hard Day's Night, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Planet of the Apes, Breathless, Psycho, just to name a couple. Oh, oh, do you think Julie Andrews visited Harris County? I bet she would sign my Mary Poppins soundtracks. It seems like a long shot, but who knows? If you want to watch some of the shows from this era, why not use your library card to check out the Canopy app? It's free and it allows you to stream movies, shows, and cartoons from all decades. And if a record player or jukebox isn't quite your style, you can still listen to some of the fab tunes using the Freegal Music app to get your groove on. Well, I think we've done enough library research for now. You're ready to swing into the 60s? Yep, let's get out of sight. Ugh, I can't hear anything over all the yelling. Where did we end up? Y'all, y'all, I know where we are. What? You don't recognize the eighth wonder of the world when you see it? You're in the Astrodome, home of the Houston Astros, once known as the Colt 45. And somehow you appeared in my suite at the bottom of the seventh. Why? Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. See, we just came here to learn more about Harris County. Are they playing the Dodgers? Judging from the scoreboard, if my calculations are correct, this is 1969, and we're watching the Astros' last win of the decade. I'm going to explode! Well, I was about to call security, but I like your enthusiasm, so I'm just going to go along with whatever this is right now. Wait, you're Roy Hopkins, aren't you? You're a Houston legend! <laughs> Please, call me Judge Roy Hopkins, if you will. We're so happy to meet you, Judge Hopkins. Could you tell us a little bit more about what's going on in Harris County right now? Well, if you want to know what's important here in Harris County, you're standing in it. 
as head of the Houston Sports Commission, I brought the city this incredible, miraculous building, the world's greatest indoor baseball and football stadium in 1965. And just down the street, I opened Houston's first amusement park, Astro World. Last year, 1968, it's all part of my greatest masterpiece, the Astro Domain. Not to sound too full of myself, but I guarantee you that my Astro Empire will be entertaining Harris County for at least 100 years, if not more. That's the most important thing going on in Houston? What about the airport? Didn't George Bush Intercontinental Airport open up in the 60s? Bush? Oh, you must mean the Houston Intercontinental Airport. Bush is a lawman like me. Nice fellow, but he's not airport owner caliber. <laughs> not like me, hopefully. I think that's Bush Airport, before it was Bush Airport. But yes, I'm pretty sure that when a city goes from the 14th to the 6th largest in the country in a decade, an intercontinental airport is not far behind. It sounds like the infrastructure of our city is really getting a boost this decade. What else is new? Well, in less exciting news, the downtown tunnel system was built in 1961, which really helps those working stiffs downtown go grab a bite to eat at lunch or even go see a movie without ever having to rise above ground. And if you kids are some of those flower children I keep hearing about, some weird statue called the Crab debuted at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston in 1962. The broken obelisk was also completed in Montrose in 1967. Nearby some crackpot chapel I hear they've been working on. The crab? Is that that orange thing out front? I always wondered what that thing was. Affirmative. But my personal favorite is the folk art manifesto, the beer can house. Mm, I bet that one was fun to work on. The man who was making it, John Milkovich, started it just last year in 1968. Seems like a, a cool cat. Right? Oh, I love the beer can house. I had no idea it was so old. And in bigger news, JFK had his last supper right here in Houston at the Wrights Hotel. Oh, I guess that's kind of a bummer of an event, though. Never mind. Also, NASA is hard at work at the space race to get to the moon before the end of the year. I heard the city is even going to open up a park, Prospect Park, in order to commemorate the event. Wow, so much is happening in this decade, especially locally. And that's another out for the Dodgers. The Astros are really giving it their all this game. Oh. Looks like we're at the top of the eighth. Now, if you don't mind, I really have to get back to the game. It's looking good for us, and I gotta start planning the after party. Oh, right. Now, kid, I really like your team spirit. So, please, have a jersey on the house. Wow, a real Astros jersey. I can't wait to wear it to a game. Maybe it'll bring us luck and we'll even reach the World Series again. Hold on. Did you say the World Series? Oh, nothing. She's just being extra optimistic today. Young people these days. Well, team, now that things are wrapped up around here, you ready to go back into the future? Huh? Oh, yeah. This trip was a gas. Let's break on through to the other side. Wow, I can't believe we got to see the Astros play in the Astrodome in their opening decade. It was so neat getting to meet Roy. And a ballpark hot dog for just 30 cents? Can't beat a trip like that. That was rather groovy, wasn't it? And I can't believe Astros tickets were only $3.50. A ticket to a game today averages $50. Imagine all the games you could go to for that now. Right? I can't believe that the average salary in 1960 was just $5,315 a year. That wouldn't get you very far now though. <laughs> Speaking of far, gas was still only a quarter a gallon. Imagine that. My commute would cost me nothing if that was the case now. My house too. 
I could buy another house for $12,700. Man, inflation is real, all right. If only we could still get a McDonald's cheeseburger for under a quarter. Instead, I'm paying a dollar for McDouble? Bread was just 22 cents from the grocery store, and meat was still under two quarters per pound. A homemade burger could be almost just as cheap. All of these facts, numbers, and statistics can be found at www.thepeopleshistory.com. You can also find more information about the 60s along with other decades we've traveled through by using our database resources found on the HCPL website, www.hcpl.net. You can also find all of our adventures on any of our social media as well as the HCPL YouTube channel. And join us next month as we swoop into the 70s. See, See you in, in the past. past.